Hey guys, this is Reggie with A Team Appliance, and today is uh, this is a series on um, running your business, right? So this is for those who are in the appliance business, who are in the, the flipping business. Uh, we're looking to get into it, um, and this, so I just, just want to give my insight and my experience. I've been doing this for quite a while, and uh, I just want to give my my expertise and you know kind of reach back and and you know give advice to new guys because I know when I started all I had was YouTube only mentor I had was <laughs> YouTube uh, only backup I had was YouTube only question I had to ask was YouTube um, so I just want to you know it'd been nice to have to dial somebody up and and you know just ask questions you know and a lot of times when I when I first started it wasn't like a little guy like me on YouTube just sharing knowledge it was like big companies uh, with fancy videos and stuff like that and you know uh, millions of followers and your question gets lost in the sauce you know um, so on my page I try to answer many questions as I can uh, also there are pros uh, on my page too that will jump in and chime in on answering questions too so um, let's go ahead and get started here and uh, as always you know we're sp uh, sponsored and partner with Earth Breeze Earth Breeze is not dryer sheets but laundry detergent sheets uh, one square is uh, will we'll wash a full tub, an old school washer will wash a full tub of clothes and a high efficiency, a half a square, which will give you 60 loads, um, will wash a full tub of clothes. So um, I use it myself um, and I rec as a tech, I do recommend them because it's all, it, it, um, it's, it's an upgrade to what's available, right? Powder, which is the worst to use. I will, <laughs> I will stand by that um, for machines um, as far as like, you know, because it breaks down the metal and stuff like that. And I got a video all on that anyway. And liquid detergent, uh, you know, because it's liquid, splashes around. So now all that goes into the tub and what's remaining can get bacteria and mildew on it. So uh, Earth Breeze laundry detergent sheets, sheets um, are a awesome option um, to counter those issues so anyway let's get into it so I want to talk about pricing um, pricing 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 so there are levels to pricing right when you first start so I got, I got three levels right so I got, I got a little I got a little notes so I'm getting a little professional here guys <laughs> got notes um, so pricing so there are three levels to pricing and again, again my opinion right nice guy level professional and then entitled, right? So I'm gonna go through all three levels. Nice guy pricing, professional pricing, and then entitled pricing. Um, nice guy pricing, let's start with that. Nice guy pricing is typically when you first start, right? And you fix something and it takes you all of like 10, 15 minutes to fix it. And you feel guilty charging over $100. Usually you feel guilty charging over $100 so that it took you five minutes to fix. Uh, the part might have cost ten dollars, or your uh, you might not have, you might not even had to put a part in it, um, but your expertise is what got the machine fixed. But you you feel guilty, right? And usually this type of mentality comes from if you worked a nine to five or you worked an hourly job where you got like maybe twenty thirty dollars an hour, and you're like, man, I've been here 10, fifteen minutes. And I'm gonna make more than it took, you know, <laughs> my old job. You know, it took me three hours to make this, you know, a uh, hundred bucks. So you feel guilty. Um, obviously, the, the the mentality of that is 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 warranted because you're you're pricing with your heart, right? Um, but you don't want underprice. And so here's a few pros and cons from that, right? Um, if you underprice, number one, you're selling yourself short. You're commodity you're selling isn't that cheap ten dollar part you're selling the expertise to diagnose the problem and to fix the problem right because let's say a bearing job right if you do a tub bearing the bearings maybe twenty dollars for a tub uh, bearing the actual bearing itself just the bearing but it's going to take three or four hours to get that thing up or not not really but um let's say two hours three hours because you just run into you know stuck parts that won't come off and all that stuff but uh, three hours labor uh, getting that thing apart right so yeah the part might cost $20 but you're not gonna pay you're not gonna pocket it 60 bucks you know after the cost of the part 60 70 dollars uh, just because the part was cheap right you so you're, you're not pricing based off the percentage of the part 
Um, mechanics don't do that. Nobody does that. So just keep that in mind. So it's a way of thinking. Now, this isn't leverage. The, the advice I'm giving isn't leverage to attack a customer with, right? Stay professional and just say, hey, well, the reason why is because of the labor. You know, it takes a lot to, you know, I got to do this, this, and this. Um, if they don't understand that, then uh, you're kind of wasting your breath and to say, that, you know, and if you, you've seen a lot of that, then you want to might do your pricing up front, especially that's, that's what I do anyway. Um, you know, I want to make sure I'm, I'm dealing with the right customers. So that's that might be another video too, how to deal, how to know what type of customer you're dealing with. <laughs> might be my next series. Um, but for the most part, we're talking about most customers, right? Most customers are understanding of that. If you get a customer that's chiseling you about that the part was cheap, you got the wrong customer, and some of it might be your fault. It could be the way you set up, set everything up too, right? Um, so a lot of times you want to explain things ahead of time before charging the customer. A lot of times customers might feel like, well, hey, in their head, if it's over $100 to fix this thing, I'd rather get rid of it. I'd rather buy a new one. But you don't want to take that option from them. So a lot of times the customers feel offended because you took that option from them because you fixed it and then told them a the price. So we don't want to do that. We don't operate that way, right? So um, new guy pricing, again, you're pricing from your heart. You don't want to price from your heart. Price from the value that you're bringing, Okay. And so it got to stay within these guidelines of professional and entitled. You don't, you don't want to jump to entitled because of what I just said. So uh, there are blue books out there to help you with pricing. Um, personally, I don't use blue book. I use, I, I base it off my area and the feel of the customer, right? Um, feel of the customer, not saying, you know, I charge more for food, I have money, nothing like that. No, just the feel of, okay, uh, you know, if I go to a fifty thousand, you know, maybe a hundred thousand dollar house like in my area, that's a very cheap house, um, and it's a beat up machine. You know, it's an old machine. Okay, this person, you know, might be a five hundred dollar bearing job, but this customer probably not gonna pay that. So I'm gonna say something up front, right? I'm gonna tell them up front how much it is. I'm gonna explain his options. Um, so new guy pricing, you price from your heart, you feel guilty. Uh, you how to how to fix that? You fix that by knowing your worth, knowing what your work is worth, right? A lot of times, and you'll gauge it. And so I'll, I'll say, from my particular experience, uh, for at least a year or two, I was a new guy pricer because I felt guilty. I felt liberated. Now you feel liberated too, right? Because you came from a job where you don't make that much money that fast, and so you feel guilty. Um, also, I was. Um, I wanted to be the nice guy, you know, I want to be, you know, you, you, the, the praise, like, oh, man, you fixed it, and he was cheap, you know, they put that in, 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 in they put that in the, the comments and stuff for you, and uh, that's nice, that's, that's, that's all good, but, you know, in hindsight, a lot of times, okay, and so another uh, issue that you may be a nice guy, just another way of knowing, if you, if you don't know you're a nice guy, if you get a lot of, that's it, from the customer, you tell them the price, that's it? That's all, or they force. Hey, I'm gonna pay you more because that's not for what you did, you know. And so that kind of woke me up too, um, especially with my higher end customers that are used to cutting checks. Um, they don't want to get ripped off either, right? They don't want to get priced based off of their their the value of their home um, or the area they live in, uh, but they want to be fair too. And they are used to be honest. They are used to paying a little bit more than other, most people. But um, when I got a lot of that said. You know, oh, you know, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this much. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollars more than you asked because that's not fair. <laughs> you know, you're underpriced. Like they for, they're gonna give you a hundred dollars more than what you, you charge them. Um, so that's that's the key. And that's the indicator of if you're a nice guy and you're doing nice guy pricing, right? So uh, feel free to leave, to leave a comment if you want to add to that nice guy pricing. Other some other uh, symptoms I might have left out. Uh, a lot of pros in my in my in my page. Uh, if you are a uh, typically on the customer side, give us your input. We we love it. You know, and it's the thing I always say in my channel. None of us is better than all of us. So input is important. Professional pricing. I probably should say this one for last. Yes, let's say professional pricing for for last. Even though I got in the middle, because <laughs> that's where you aim to be in the middle, right? Uh, let's go to entitled pricing, right? It's a bit more exciting to talk about. What's entitled pricing? Entitled pricing, usually the language of the tech is, well, you're paying for my years of experience of going to school, which is true. Um, 
but if you're overcharging, right? So entitled pricing is overcharging. Entitled pricing is I've worked hard, I deserve more. Or sometimes it comes from a, a position of jealousy. The customer has a nice house, you know, and there's a lot of nice stuff, and you feel like, oh, they're gonna pay. Oh, you pay for you, you, you can afford this nice uh, Viking range, you're gonna pay, you pay me, right? Well, and those, those, and those techs do deserve more, though, so that's probably a bad example. Um, but because it's, it's a specialty, specialty product, uh, and a lot of uh, techs work on those. So, you know, if they have, a, I guess, a, a Porsche in a driveway or, uh, you know, 1978, you know, Mustang or something, I don't know, uh, something you deem of value and you're like, they can buy that, they can pay me. And you overcharge, right? They should be able to pay you, but they overcharge. Uh, so that's an entitled pricing. Uh, I see a lot of that on some of the groups I'm in, a lot of entitled pricing. Like when somebody says, hey, how much do you charge to uh, install a heating element on a Kenmore dryer? You'll get ranges. People will say, oh, I charge 150. You got people like, oh, 350, or they'll, do these, or they'll go from the, uh, the entitled person too, will also have these justifiable charges, right? Oh, for my fuel, my the wear and tear on my truck, um, <laughs> My tools I gotta pay for, uh, this part I had to drive to get that. Um, I had to, oh, drive, I mean, you know, just driving, I had to drive uh, three miles to get here, and the statistics of getting in a car accident, the dangers of that, and losing my life in a car accident is the gear to fix your washer. I mean, all these things, these, these bullet points that justify uh, overcharging is the entitled pricing on, your, on the text. Um, and, you know, or justify, oh, I went to school for this, and, you know, this is what you should pay. You know, the job pays what the job should pay, right? So we don't want to be the nice guy pricing. We don't want to be entitled guy pricing, right? Uh, and I say guy, but, you know, guys and girls, right? And so we, we don't, you know, so that's, that's a sign of entitled, right? Another thing that will, excuse me, um, of entitled pricing, and this is a symptom. You know, sometimes you don't want to be entitled. Sometimes people feel that they're felt they're pushed to be there, right? It's a decision, and a lot of times because they're broke. So, if they're broke, they'll say, uh, "Oh, I'm charged." You know, okay. So let's say your car insurance is due, and your car insurance is three hundred dollars, and if you don't make three hundred dollars today, they're gonna uh, uh, cancel your car insurance. And so you get to a point, I mean, you cross your fingers at this repair, like, ooh, I hope this is a $300 repair, <laughs> right? We've been there, come on now. I know you've been there, I know you've been there. We've all been there. Um, but don't forget, be a good person. So you get there, like, I hope this repair is a $300 repair. You get there and maybe it's a, I don't know, let's say a lid switch on a 15 year old Kenmore drop washer, right? Okay, that's a little tough to, to charge three hundred dollars, right? You might be get one hundred fifty, but three hundred is a little tough, right? And you charge three hundred, right? And or you see the Porsche in the driveway or the Range Rover in the garage, and you think, oh, I'm gonna charge them three hundred dollars. Uh, they they might they might and they might pay it and they may not even complain, but they will show their disdain for your pricing by not calling you back ever again. And that may be fine with some of you guys, but if you're trying to build a business, build a legacy, that's not okay. So most most complaints you'd never hear, you never even know existed, right? Just because you have a five-star rating in Google, um, I mean, that's, that is hard to achieve because so many complainers out there, right? <laughs> people are motivated by complaining. But a lot of nice people, people that have good hearts, they'll just say, eh, I just won't call you back. They'll, give you, they'll write you the check. And I just won't call you back. They won't tell you that. They'll tell you to your face probably, okay, we'll call you next time we need y'all. But behind closed doors or when they get together to powwow or the wife come home and, and she said, how much he charge you? You know, I could have got a new one for an extra $300 more, you know. Uh, yeah. People talk. That's by another video too, man. Shoot. <laughs> People rate you not by going to Google and bash you all the time. That's usually the stream. They just rate you by not not calling you again, not saving your number, calling Joe, you know, Joe the plumber. <laughs> um, so yeah, just be careful with, uh, you know, and sometimes broke people are the most dangerous. Even with customers, customers that are broke, they need to, they want their washer fixed. May not have a lot of money to fix it, and they will instead of saying, you know, man, I just don't got it. 
they'll just say, oh, I'm a single mom. Oh, um, you know, I just got divorced. You know, man, I just got divorced and I don't have a lot of money. They give you all these excuses to charge you. That's not my problem. Hey, I got, I got my, I'm not divorced. <laughs> I got a, I got, I got a family fee. You know, that's not not, nobody take offense to that. But, um, there are a lot of reasons and those could be valid reasons. They could be true, but I, I'm not going to have to, I'm not paying for what you're going through. I should have to pay for that. Right. Um, to be honest with you, I get more people a breaks that just say that tell me on the phone before I get there. Hey, I don't got a lot of money to spend on this, man. I, you know, this is my cap. You think you can be fixed for this much? And I would determine, make a determination from there. Or I'll even go into more details. Hey, all right, well, just send me a picture of your washer. Boom. Okay, I might be able to keep it long as this, this, and this, you know. Or, hey, I could give you a break on a diagnostic fee since we did all this over the phone. And, you know, if I really need to, you know, if I really want to get, want to get the guy's business. Um, but, uh, but yeah, even broke customers, man, are dangerous because you'll get there. And some, some broke customers will tell you up front. Most of them will. But a lot of them will give you excuses or try to devalue you. Right, and that's when that that part conversation. Oh, the parts only well, looked online. The parts twenty dollars, man. Why are you charge me three hundred? Like you know what I mean? So they'll try to justify, you know, or you know, they have a problem with the diagnostic fee. So you have some uh, people that have diagnostic fee. Usually, not all bad people. Now that's by another video too. People that have to have problems with the diagnostic fee. Keep in mind, some of them, especially if they're renters, they're not used to paying that. Like if you're a lifetime uh, renter of your home. You used to call in somebody and a guy show up and it's fixed and you ain't paying out a dime, right? Nothing wrong with that. They're just, you know, it's their, their reality, some people's reality. But people who own homes know you call a guy out, you're going to be, you're going to be cut a check for at least a hundred bucks, even if nothing gets fixed, right? Or you ask questions ahead of time before you, you deploy the person. But if you send a professional to your house, there's a diagnostic fee. But don't get all, don't get all, you know, all, all bent out of shape uh, texts if, customers aren't familiar with diagnostic fees. They're not trying to rip you off. Some people just don't know. So I feel that's got grabbing up a package in my house. <laughs> so uh, let me pause the video and get my package. See, this problem is working from home, man. You got to stop stuff. Hang on. Okay, let's get back on task. <laughs> so that's entitled, right? So now let's go to professional pricing. I think you all probably know the answer to this. Uh, professional pricing is the medium between nice guy pricing and entitled pricing. You're in the middle. Where, um, and if you're going from nice guy to professional, whatever price that you have in your head, bump it, and you'll hit professional, right? If you're entitled and you're trying to come down to professional, it's usually a hard move to do because you're stubborn, right? And you're entitled, and usually you're not a good business person, you're not, you know. <laughs> but if uh, you're making a change and you're going from entitled to professional, then bump your prices. Whatever price you got in your head, lower it, right? Um, and professionals, basically, what's fair for you and your customer. So, uh, blue book, full blue book value, if you use a blue book, isn't probably that fair. Um, it's a gauge. It's a guide to knowing if you're entitled, to be honest with you, if you're over blue book value, then you're probably entitled pricing. If you're at blue book value, you still may be entitled pricing. Um, if you're too far below, then you're at nice guy pricing. So, um, professional pricing, what is pricing? It's what's fair between you and the customer. And you, a lot of times you can tell off the feedback you get from your customers. Uh, so in, in general, as a whole, if customer is still calling you back to come back and fix things, then you're probably within professional pricing. Uh, if you tell your customer the price, they're like, okay, no problem. Boom. You're probably professional pricing because if you hear, oh, that's it, that'd be much more. You're probably nice guy pricing. If you hear, oh, wow, okay, oh, if I knew that, I'd, I'd have went and got a new one. Then you're probably entitled pricing or just overpriced. You know, sometimes a fluke, but just overall. And you're not getting callbacks from your customers, right? Um, that's a, a sign of entitled pricing. Now, there's other nuances, right? So I'm not going to say, you know, it's, it's that cut and dry. It's other nuances, right? If you if you give a poor presentation and the customer the customer's not, from, not actually understanding what you're doing, uh, that can come across as you're overpriced, right? So um, or if you don't present prep, prep properly, like if you don't price present before you do your repair, uh, that can come across as, you know, entitled pricing. So uh, professional pricing is just is finding that, that middle ground and getting the proper amount of feedback, that's where you know you're at. 
Um, and also at the end of the day, put yourself in the customer's shoes. That usually helps too with knowing if you're professional pricing or not. Right? So um, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, so you can get notifications when these videos pop up. You know, the conversations with Reggie in the shop. Uh, don't forget, check out Earth Breeze. That is in the description below. The link is below. Uh, very affordable, uh, very good for the life of your machine. Very healthy. So, um, you know, if Earth Breeze was a food, it would be like vegan. <laughs> like a vegan diet like the perfect like you know the, our, our original neanderthal diet it's hard to do though but you know with earth breeze it's easy so uh yeah this is an episode on pricing nice guy professional entitled what are you feel free to comment below don't forget to check out the description this is reggie with a team appliance